Hello everybody, it's Vin Jelly here and welcome to my studio. It's been a while since I've produced a video and I decided that I would change things up a bit. Um, I've been doing a series of time-lapse videos over the um, period of lockdown and um, my equipment really limited me to that. Um, but recently I've made a bracket which allows me to hold a different camera ab above my work space. So, um, I'm now able to film real time more easily and thus start to produce more tutorial like videos which is something I've been hoping to do for some time um, and because I teach watercolours this is quite a useful um, extra and it's nice to share it with a broader public occasionally um, if I think that the topic will make an interesting video and so um, this is the first of them and it's to do with a series of ruined castles that I've been working on um, the first one I painted uh, was just for my own pleasure and experimentation and I sold it quite quickly um, and then I decided this would make quite a good subject for the watercolour class and so I did a live demonstration and uh, prior to that a practice piece to take along um, so that I knew what to do in the demonstration and um, since then I've painted a couple more and um, in so doing started to make these video at uh, this video um, the first attempt failed because I got the focus wrong but the second attempt hopefully this one uh, will be much better and will be quite um, an in-depth demonstration I've removed areas where there's no um, action at all um, so the to total video is about 40 minutes long beyond this opening introduction and um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope uh, if you find it useful please put comments down below um, nice ones hopefully um, and please subscribe and like and hopefully I'll be producing more such videos in the future when um, the, the subject lends itself to producing a more tutorial based video so this video um, the subject matter was really using dark photographs that had hardly any light in them and uh, not much atmosphere quite nice subjects but really the, the photographs were quite hard to deal with i'm not going to show the photograph that i've used here because i don't have copyright to it and i haven't copied it i've just basically used it as inspiration i've changed the perspective on the castle itself just as using my own knowledge of perspective to um, develop the image into something that was a bit more dramatic and a bit more suited the lay of the land that I added to the image because the in the uh, photograph the reference photograph there wasn't a lot of um, landscape visible so I wanted to create more space around the motif around the castle and um, create a bit more drama in so doing and allow space for effects so the project really was about introducing colour and effects to emphasise atmosphere uh, and to put colour where colour wasn't appearing in the reference shot. So I hope that you find this interesting because um, it's, it's really going through the thought process. So I'm going to provide a narrative as I paint and hopefully you'll find that useful and interesting. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. So here are three that I've done previously. The left one was the first one, then the second one was the actual live class demo, and the third one was the one that I tried to video where my video was out of focus, and so that was a failure. So it prompted me to do another one for this video. So by now I'm getting quite adept at uh, how I want these things to appear and practice is always a good thing and even though I'm not producing exactly the same image they're very similar um, so I've got stretched paper and I'm just putting in an initial wash now one of the things that I'm trying to do the, the color scheme won't be naturalistic I want it to look kind of believable but it's all about atmosphere and effects really um, so I'm using a very warm um, cad orange here and just to, I think it's CAD free actually these days but um, anyway I'm just doing a very light wash of it over the background and probably over some of the building as well as I go 
um, taking care to leave some white areas, particularly where the windows are. So even though the sky will show through, um, I want to leave those a bit lighter. Um, I'm adding a bit of uh, turquoise as well to this, just to tone down that orange slightly. So it's a fairly wet and fairly pale wash. You can see my palette there. I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre and some cad yellow pale. And just building up the painting. I want to keep everything as light as I can, go as far as I can with these light, warm colours to start with. I often advise my class to do this because it gives you a lot of scope to play with. If you can make a believable um, set of values that creates something with form and light in it, with just a few um, fairly light toned pigments, um, all of a similar um, colour temperature, then it really helps um, when you start to want to introduce other colours because you've already got a sense of what you're doing and where darks and lights will be and then you can pull and push. So here I'm adding some salt, it's just ordinary table salt really, um, to, to create a little bit of texture. I'm allowing it to dry as well where I've applied the salt, but I haven't applied it on this part and this part's already dried. So as I said in the introduction, I've edited out some parts so that uh, when paint is drying, you're not just sitting there watching nothing. Um, so again, I'm applying the same cadmium free orange and the brightest part at the top is really where the sunlight will be falling. Now in the reference shot, there was no sunlight. There was possibly a faint um, amount of ambient sunlight filtering through the clouds, I guess, because shadow was certainly visible. Um, but as in many British uh, landscape situations, you get fairly light conditions um, which do create pools of darkness and you can to a certain extent work out where sunlight might be. It's never 100% but it gives you some idea and that's what I'm aiming at doing here. So as you can see I'm just gradually building things up and I'm mixing in some warmer, well not necessarily warmer but some more intense red now which is going to represent the edge of where the shadow um, falls. And I'm using that as a sort of basic colour for the darker shadows to start with. So the oranges are representing the more light areas and the reds are representing darker areas. So I'm working wet in wet here and applying these reds to represent areas of shade. A little bit of a darker red there going in because these are, these areas are more in shade. And I need to build up the darks around those apertures. That little line going across is just representing where there was a floor originally. So I don't want too many hard edges here, but there are going to be some that develop. In these early stages, even if there are some hard edges, they won't be too um, problematic if I decide I want to soften them later, because there'll be this is just a lot of underpainting largely that will quite a lot of it will be worked over at least a bit and that will um, this is just part of developing the painting and part of the planning. I often think it's really important to plan um, as you go and beforehand. This is the really good thing about 
doing two or three versions of a painting because you you're actually preparing yourself each time and developing the idea each time so a lot of the paint I'm actually dropping it in um, it's hard to explain anything better than that until you actually get used to that technique these mop brushes hold a lot of water and you can actually pool it and then push the pools around it's a little bit it takes a little bit of getting used to it's not how we maybe intuitively paint by just dipping in um, our brushes to water then to paint and then applying it which is much more prone to giving hard edges so that background tower that I painted in a moment ago there that's very palely applied I've done that to knock it back a bit but I'm using the same pale washes here on the wall that projects forward um, just as underpainting in that case but the tower I'll probably leave fairly pale just so that it recedes and now I'm using the similar cadmium orange that I've used already to just suggest some abstract cloud shapes really um, laying in the initial cloud shapes you saw me applying some salt a moment ago uh, I keep applying that salt here and there and then letting things dry forgive me if I repeat myself a little bit but I just realized that I'd spent the last 10 minutes recording this section uh, well I thought I was recording it but I'd failed to pr press the record button uh, so I was rather annoyed to find that I, I, I actually hadn't <laughs> recorded it. So I'm doing it again. And um, hence I might repeat myself or say things I'd already said in the first section. So the cloud, again, it's underpainting. Again, I'm going to be applying some salt. Um, so what's underneath is a brighter yellow, uh, which you can't see very clearly at the moment paler yellow um, and then the orange over the top when the salt is applies is applied to that and um, takes effect you'll see the pale yellow underneath coming through the effect and here I'm intensifying the orange where the sunlight falls and adding reds as it moves into shadow and it's actually darker than the sky even though sunlight's falling upon it again wet in wet where the salt effects have been before it's dried and i've applied uh, i've brushed off the salt and um i waited for it to completely dry and then finished it off with a hairdryer before i wiped the salt off so they didn't smear it and make any marks that were unwanted and I'm just carrying on with the abstract first stages of this brickwork, suggesting that making varied marks, just suggesting the form of the castle. I'm moving again into the foreground now to continue building up the painting uh, in more of a totality so that it's not just working on the center of focus all the time I want to develop the painting more or less as a whole as I go forward because doing that means that you then know where you need to pull and push and emphasize things to strengthen that focal point so I'm using this quite strong red as a initial shadow color which will darken down and probably cool down somewhat later on because when you have warm light you tend to have cooler shadows but this will work as a nice underneath painting and help with the harmony of the whole piece I find that if you paint just a cool colour straight on to the page that has its use, uses but sometimes a warmer underpainting can give it a different appearance and in a painting like this it helps to harmonize the whole thing and make it a little bit more interesting
so I'm just resting my finger on the page keep my, my most of my hand off the page just in case I catch any wet paint I'm working flat at the moment as well rather than on an angle partly because of the, the filming uh, makes it a bit easier to set up the camera it's never easy filming and painting at the same time gives you a bit of an edge sometimes in terms of concentration but you've got to remember to make sure your battery's still charged make sure you're still in focus and um, remember to, to paint see what it's all about So the castle consists of, or the castle ruin rem remains consist of just three walls really. That back wall with the windows in it and these two projecting walls. There's a bit of that tower sticking up and the bit I'm working on at the moment is a bush growing in the aperture. Um, and then I've created the idea of a bit of a path coming down with, with some fence posts. And um, these sort of blobs of paint are kind of indicative of tussocks of grass really but a lot of that will be lost and overpainted with other colours later on and it all adds to the creation of texture um, and effect so I'm, I'm just working with a medium sized brush now and just filling in a lot of this suggesting shapes and just creating variety but again if you look at the painting as a whole it's still very pale so a bit more salt going on just to create texture in that underpainting and a lot of this is preparatory work for the later stages and I wouldn't have been able to do this some time ago but because I've done a series it's developing and becoming more experienced with this particular approach and this particular motif and it's giving me ideas each time to me that's part of the fun I didn't used to like the idea of repainting things but in watercolour because it's a very immediate medium once you get some idea of what you're doing it, it, I find that really helpful um, that practice element you can really develop ideas whereas with oil I don't know you could probably still do that but there's a tendency to paint over things and scrub things back and scrape them back it was for me anyway some might argue so when I'm darkening I'm actually painting into small cutouts mm. where the layers of oops there goes my phone in the background um, so as I was saying I'm painting into the um, crevices so that the shadow is linking to those crevices here and there <clears throat> and down here in this corner it's particularly dark so I, I can really deepen that now and begin to emphasize that depth of that shadow and I'll need to do that because as I develop the whole uh, tonality of the painting that area will be dark and I don't want the darks to be dead I don't want them to just to be flat dead colour I want them to have this vibrancy coming through from underneath a bit of an underglow if you like so it's really worth taking time that's one thing about doing a, a rather than a time lapse doing a live action uh, real time video that is that you get the sense of how long things actually take rather than just seeing it all in one very speeded up uh, video um, so you need to invest time in watching it obviously if you want to really see how long things take and a lot of people seem quite interested in that this actual painting really in terms of brush time didn't take that long to do 
and because I've removed various um, bits of footage where nothing was actually happening and I was waiting for things to dry um, that shortened the time and made the actual uh, brush time evident but um, in terms of the actual painting it took longer than that now you can see I've made a bit of an error in the window aperture uh, a bit of a blob and I decide that I'll make a feature of that and make it into some tracery add a bit of interest that wasn't there on the reference shot at all um, and it's something that I think adds a little bit of interest pulls the eye in a bit more adds a, a, a different focal point of detail takes it a little bit further some of that tracery would be hidden behind the depth of the wall the thickness of the wall so in perspective you wouldn't see it the actual photograph the perspective wasn't quite the same as it is now but I wanted to uh, develop that and make it a little bit more dramatic for my own end so that understanding of architecture kicks in there um, the more you look at architecture or draw architecture the more your understanding of it grows and develops um, so here are some sort of corbels which I'm just representing as little dots shadows if you like shadow shapes um, but in the photograph they were actual corbels that would have supported wooden beams on the floor ultimately of the upper section I guess there were three floors in what we can see here and then, uh, then there'd be a, um, a roof a flat roof maybe just underneath those castellations so having a bit of an understanding helps you to um, use a reference shot um, subject wise so maybe a castle like this might be a bit difficult to dream up unless you were very familiar with lots and lots of castles um, and I've made a bit of a mistake there uh, by dropping my brush a bit clumsy butter fingers but by just cleaning the brush and drying it out and then use a bit of clean tissue I can mop that away and because it's light underpainting as I keep talking about um, it's not been a catastrophic uh, mistake there's a bit of a projection of piece of old wall sticking out at the side which was quite strange I decided to leave it in I could have left it out um, and I think it adds another diagonal that perhaps um, works with the direction of the light But going back to what I was saying about the architecture, I've, I've altered the perspective a little bit and having an understanding of perspective um, and not being a complete slave to copying what was there is very liberating. So if you have that kind of understanding of the structure and how it might actually be um, in different aspects, uh, it's almost like making a model from imagination, um, from just looking at a photograph like I've looked at and then making a 3D model uh, if you can do that in your head um, up to a point obviously you don't know what features there might be on the back of this building um, but you can guess and, and having that bit of knowledge of architecture and structures and form helps you to um, convey it so when you're out and about look at lots of things and, and how they work in space and light and it will help you to develop your own skills of how you might go about altering uh, reference so more layers of paint more salt um, this is the pattern that I've been using throughout and keeping the palette clean so that I'm not uh, creating muddy colors and keeping that cleanliness it's part of the process and if you practice that process it's really a better way of getting nice clean results um, the hair dryer going on I'm not drying the lower bits where I've added salt at the moment just the little bit where I want to keep working for the time being so just a few moments of blasting with the hair dryer saves a bit of time now wiping off some of the salt residue and then back on with it 
the yellow oaken out so that outside wall to darken it where it uh, meets the sky and variety within the surfaces if I were to paint that whole elevation just the same it would look a bit boring whereas I've been dabbing paint moving it about mixing a little bit of other a bit of the orange in there although that's going on the other part just making variety you've seen now that this is about the third time I've gone over that piece of um, masonry I'm adding a bit of uh, um, I think it's raw sienna that one um, just there's a bit of gradation going across from where the, the red of the shadow delineates the shade up to where the flat of the wall contrasts against the sky again indication of another floor there and just a few lines lots of variety of brush marks mixing a bit of cobalt blue in now so I'm finally starting to uh, intensify some of the shades uh, shaded areas a bit of ultramarine there in as well so whilst it's essentially a fairly limited palette there are quite a lot of colors in there um, but I'm limiting the scope of it keeping it fairly narrow and now intensifying those shadows even more which as you can see makes the white of the um, sky behind coming through the windows much more noticeable and powerful and that contrast draws the eye that's the center of focus just varying the amount of water on the brush a little bit of mixing on the uh, paper and intensifying that red where it meets the yellow and thus making it a little bit darker as I go it's really worth taking time to develop these areas once they're painted they're painted so you might as well spend time and have fun doing it what's the hurry after all so here I am just developing that shadow at the edge using this purple just drawing with the brush taking my time thinking the marks through keeping them varied cooling it slightly without really getting too cool yet varying the brush marks thinking about where the light's coming from this little what I invented as a little bell tower the top of a little bell tower in the background just adding some pale tone to that it won't have much more around it at all but there'll be a little bit of fading out aerial perspective landscape suggested around that using one of my smaller mop brushes now beginning to feel my way outwards from the center of focus into the foreground to try and create some interest down here and marks and different um, textures but it's still quite tentative nothing over bold keeping it quite small at the moment just feeling my way 
maybe just suggesting the shadows of these posts, bearing in mind where the light's coming from. Still not sure whether the posts will become a, a feature uh, as such, or whether they'll be just a distraction that I can paint over. Just bearing in mind that foreground hole and how it relates to the sky. Trying to keep the whole thing developing as I go. And when you get going a little bit darker with some of these, they'll fade off slightly anyway, and I can, or or I can dab them out if I think they're getting a bit too dark too soon. Whilst it, because this foreground is invented and fairly abstract, I've got to be a little bit careful about how I go. Uh, but I want to use these effects with the salt and with various strong colours and washes to add a lot of interest. Uh, of abstr abstraction. So if you can hear a bit of uh, piano music in the background, my wife's teaching a piano lesson there, so um, apologies for that, but on a bit of a tight schedule and um, I can't wait until she's finished. She's got a couple of lessons to go. So I'm adding um, a much deeper red now. This is a bit of a risk. I haven't, I'm in uncharted territory here. The other examples didn't um, go so boldly with the colour. I was more restrained but I've decided I wanted to move into a different zone of experimentation and strengthen up some of the colours. So this looks quite outlandish at the moment and it's very strong, but again, it's underpainting. It's going to be worked over. It will become more subdued as it dries. Um, I'm going to add salt to it to create more texture again. Um, I'm applying different brush marks to keep it varied. And at the moment it just looks fairly imbalanced but there comes a point where you have to if you want to introduce different things you have to do it and you have to take that risk and keep the goal in mind um, so that you don't lose the plot risks and mess that up but if you've got a vision in mind and you've practiced up to a point you know that you can pull it round so it's, it's a matter of confidence really so whilst it's still wet, the red, I'm putting in more of the purple I've already used. And um, that ties and harmonizes this foreground to the building. So just adding those darker purples already starts to give me faith that my risk with the red wasn't too bad. And it was a calculated risk and I think it'll probably work out. It's, if you look at the hole, it still looks a little bit odd and imbalanced, but as I develop it, you'll see that I had more than just that in mind. And now, here comes some cobalt blue. And you can see that by adding that, it's quite a contrast, it really starts to pop out and look quite strong as a definite cooler contrasting colour against the warm oranges, reds and yellows. And it started to fade already as you can see and I'm also adding this turquoise. It's a great colour and again it's quite a risk because it's such a contrast. I'm using it quite thick, it's just moist thick paint with hardly any dilution at all. So it's going to sit on the paper and not be too transparent. It will dissipate to a certain extent because what's, what it's going on is fairly damp. So there's, that's going to help to dilute on the paper and become a little more transparent. You can see the bush in the aperture of the castle is already starting to fade. So I'll go in again and just thicken it up because I want it to be intense and it will still fade down. It won't be this intense later on. So there's a bit of um, cobalt blue going on as well, which is still 
uh, the brush has still got some of the turquoise on it. Um, I've got both colours on the brush mixing as I go. And these dabs are a little severe, but as you can see, I've got a tissue in my hand and I'll... I've always got it there just in case I need to dab things down. So now I'm adding some more orange. And then mixing a bit of a grey with the orange and the blue for those background suggestions of moorland, fading moorland, atmospherically, um, aerial perspective, perspective fading away. Also a little bit of that same um, mix of grey, a little bit more intensely on the wall there. And now a bit of salt to start to um, work into the still moist washes in the foreground. Not all of it will have an effect because there are different air, different levels of uh, wetness and that can really affect your salt effects. But that's part of the randomness um, and appeal of using this effect. It also gives you time to pause and to think while things dry. So time has elapsed and now the risk I took with the foreground I'm taking in the sky. Um, I'm using the brush in, in a very sort of flat, damp way, wet really, um, and thinning out the paint as I move downwards. So they've got the stronger red high up and uh, fading it as, it as the sky moves away from where we are into the distance also. Just speckling a bit of wet paint into the wet as well. Unfortunately the camera had uh, was bored had moved slightly so I didn't quite get the top there on this particular shot. I'm using an SLR to um, film this and uh, I can't keep an eye on the um, screen or viewfinder from where I'm working because I'm beneath it. It's a bit of a crude setup and I made a, I've got a piece of 2x2 two two which runs across from wall to wall in my studio and I use that arm to hang lights from and to hang cameras from. So now I'm going in with sap green and lightening it with a little bit of yellow here and there to create the essence of patchy scrubland and little tussocks of grass, um, little hummocks and tussocks, fading out slightly as I come down towards the bottom of the page and more intense towards the centre of focus. They lead the eye in, add yet a different texture. And if you look in the sky now, you'll see that that has dried and the salt has caused these blooms, um, which is abstract. It's lovely paintwork. It's, it's what the, the whole effect is about, really. It's not about creating accurate looking clouds. It's atmospheric. And if you look behind the little bell tower now, you can see distant um, landscape suggested with those just simple blue washes. So where I think I've gone in a bit too strong, I'll dab it out with a tissue. It's about keeping that totality in mind, the whole of the painting. Um, not letting it get away from you. So I'm just glazing over some of those reds with this sap green. Very light mix of it. And that red and orange shows through. And it wouldn't look the same if I'd just gone in straight away with the green. And at the moment it looks very busy when you're focusing on it, but starting to see the whole of the painting. If you look at the actual centre focus where the windows are, 
you don't really notice what I'm painting at the moment so much. That just becomes an abstract blur. And that's what I do. I, I try and stand back from it often. Even though it's flat, I can still stand back. Um, it does mean if I want to prop it up, I've got to move the sheet of glass on the right, which I uh, sometimes use as a, a stand. So I can pick quite a, it's a bit of a tray, really. I can pick up the uh, things I've got to the right of my drawing board. Um, and I'd have to move all those in order to stand up the, the board with the stretch paper on it to stand back and look. So I sometimes just stand back and have a, a glance at it or even take a photograph of it to see how it's looking on screen. Sometimes that can help you reduce the image down and it's akin to standing back. So some of these white areas in the foreground, the unpainted areas, I quite like that unfinished edge. Um, but sometimes it can be a bit too white, a bit too distracting. So just toning it down a little bit takes away some of its vibrance, which was distracting from that those window apertures and the centre of focus. And now I'm going back in on that left hand wall just to darken it down a little bit more. A little bit of Payne's grey being mixed in with that sap green just to get it fairly dark in that area now. So where my deepest purples and reds were, adding a bit of darker green um, with a bit of grey in it um, really intensifies it. And yet it still stands out against the red, the deepest red in that corner. So what I'm painting at the moment is the darkest aspect of the painting so far. And using a bit of that same mix diluted now create some texture in this bush and continue the effect upwards. It looks a bit mallet at the moment so dab it out a bit with the tissue. A bit of more yellow mixed in and then again a little bit more a few more dark accents and working into the brickwork a little bit more. Just to ground the whole thing so it doesn't float off. I'll give the impression of doing so. There's quite a lot of fiddly work going on here. It's still quite abstract, but there's a certain element of drawing and painting um, and building up going on. It's not unconsidered. Slightly cooler green now. And again, that use of um, warms and cools within a colour can really help the colours to be more believable in terms of light because you almost always have light and cool, um, sorry, warm and cool light playing upon, um, or, or rather if you've got a warm light, you've got the cool shadows and often vice versa. So having warm and cools within a certain colour will help to emphasise the way light really works. So I'm using a rigger brush here with a very pale wash just to suggest a few scrubby branches um, of some old tree growing out of the side of the building. A bit of undergrowth The good thing about a rigger is, as opposed to a small brush, is it holds a lot of liquid relatively and that enables you to be freer and uh, to draw longer lines. So it's good for rigging and, and the masts and basically drawing quite freely. So I'll just dab it back a little. It's just a suggestion really in the background 
So now the last part, I'm just building up. Um, I, I didn't film this real time. I filmed it time uh, time lapse. And here is the finished painting. So I hope you found that useful. And you'll notice on the last little shot, the time lapse shot, and the final um, image that there are some wiped out areas as well. I didn't manage to film those bits, um, but basically. Really, I, I wet a couple of areas that I wanted to wipe out um, and then used a, just a damp brush to wipe over them again and then applied a tissue just to take the paint off. And that really concluded the final effect um, and added a slightly mysterious, almost m patches of mist effect to the final image. As I said at the beginning, I'll hopefully be producing more of these so if you like them it really helps me realize that it's something i should endeavor to do so any positive comments and likes and subscriptions would be much appreciated because they show me i'm heading in the right direction thank you very much goodbye